everyone for showing up. I'm gonna share a few things at the beginning. Um, Earth Day, wait, it's just a second. Get back to your messed up. Got doing something else and then forgot what I was doing. Here we go. Earth Day had, you know, 1970 is when it started, right? In, in the United States and, and across the world. Uh, but things have been going on for a long time. Um, Tecumseh, I wanted to start with um, some land uh, acknowledgement and also to understand uh, indigenous uh, people's uh, understanding to, to the earth and their relationship. So uh, Tecumseh was explaining his a view to a, in a letter to William Henry Harrison. You all can see this, but I'll read it. The only way to stop this evil and its white man's settlements on Indian land is for, an in, for all red men to unite in claiming a common and equal right to the land as it was at first and should be now. For it never was divided, but always to all. Sell a country, why not sell the air, the clouds, the great sea, as well as the earth? Did not the great spirit, the master of life, make them all for the use of their children? There's a new book coming out uh, that's fairly dynamic, and it's about uh, the violence that's going on in native country, uh, uh, native uh, areas, native uh, borderland, border towns, Red Nation rising. Uh, but uh, Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz wrote a, a book a while ago on an indigenous people's history of the United States. And she's really saying that this is a very important uh, subject. Um, and a lot of the violence that's happening, particularly for uh, traditional women, native women, uh, res women um, is, is, is growing. Uh, I would also wanted to uh, bring up Chief Seattle's uh, statement on earth and, it, and how that is so sacred to his people. The earth does not belong to us, we belong to the earth. These are from an 1854 speech that uh, Chief Seattle uh, did uh, and it's garnered a lot of energy for environmental movements. Every part of the earth is sacred to my people. Every shining pine needle, every sandy shore, every mist in the dark woods, every meadow, every humming insect, all are holy in the memory and experience of my people. We are a part of the earth and it is part of us. The shining water that moves in the streams and rivers is not just water, but the blood of our ancestors. If we are to sell you land, you must remember that it is sacred and that each ghostly reflection in the clear water of the lakes tells of events and memories of the life my people. Ohio started with uh, in 1795 with the Treaty of Greenville. Everybody knows the T Treaty of Greenville. That's uh, when uh, Tecumseh and the whole um, confederation that he was trying to pull together, Iroquois uh, Confederation, uh, was had uh, through treaty, through uh, loss of war, that's why treaty was brought on, um, that gave up land that in this, uh, and you can see this is the, this is the borderline right here. Um, and it goes all the way over to Indiana, but everything down here, this was Ohio. This was still, still able to be, but in land recognition, I wanted to read out some of the, the, uh, tribes and some of the nations that were part of that and uh, were uh, subsequently kicked off their lands. Wyandotte, Delaware, Shawnee, Ottawa, Miami, Eel River, Wea, Chippewa, Potomatowin, uh, Kickapoo, Piankaksha, and Kakaskia. Uh, are some of the nations that signed on to that treaty. Another very important uh, event that's happening on HBO is Exterminate All the Brutes and by Raul Peck. He made not, I'm not your ne uh, Negro uh, movie, but he made a new movie 
and it's very powerful. Exterminate all the brutes. And I encourage you to, to get on there and try to see that movie. But I wanted to show two short clips of some action that the indigenous folks are doing uh, around the country. This is particularly about the uh, pipeline three uh, with the DAPL and um, here we go. Can everybody hear that? Minnesota and what's now Minnesota, I mean my, my people's territory is full of all these interconnected bodies of water. You look at something like that and you think, how could you possibly think to put something as dangerous as tar sands oil into something like that? The Enbridge Corporation has several lines here in the state of Minnesota. It is the largest pipeline company in the world. It solely exists to expand the fossil fuel industry through transport of the product. One only has to Google pipeline safety to see the number of pipelines which have ruptured. But suppose there was an absolutely perfect pipeline system in the United States that had no faults and could never fail. Is that a good thing? No, because what we're supposed to be doing on a global scale is decreasing the supply of and the demand for oil. Elsewhere in Minnesota, a trial began Monday for three activists who faced felony charges for their civil disobedience action in 2016 when they manually turned off a pair of Enbridge tar sands pipelines. Line 67 is shut down. We did this action because the problem of climate change is so urgent that we have to start shutting tar sands pipelines down now. A Minnesota judge has taken the unusual step of allowing four protesters to use a necessity defense. For the climate change necessity defense, what you're saying essentially is I did this. Yes, this is an illegal thing, I did this, but I did this because the harm of this is less than the harm that is caused by this thing I'm trying to fight. The Val Turners took their action in response to a call by folks at Standing Rock for solidarity action. And so it's part of a larger push and a larger strategy to get the judicial system to respond to climate change in a just way. With indigenous people, I mean, we are impacted first and worst by climate change. Oh. This is one of the pipelines that runs through Fond du Lac Reservation. I can feel the warmth through it on my moccasins. We say no over and over again to these companies, but we've said no and we mean it. You know, like we're, we're willing to stand out here and actually face what's coming. That movie is gonna be shown at the Malcolm X Park tomorrow in DC um, outside. And it's uh, gonna be uh, shown uh, there. So um, just wanted everybody to see that. Uh, one other movie I wanted to show you before we got into uh, some other parts of the, com of the meeting and the salon. Uh, and which is, this This is Earth Day, and this is the fifth year that we're celebrating WGRN. So that, that's part of what we're doing, is celebrating a local radio station that has uh, been a very dynamic and um, uh, voice for uh, social justice. So I wanted to, this is about another two minutes, and then we'll get into that, Tim. So you'll be ready to interview, introduce those folks if you can, please, in a few minutes. So that what this is, is um, we started in Minnesota, right? We started in Minnesota with the, the, the tar sands and the fight there. These are folks that came from Minnesota running, young folks ran into DC on April 1st. Tell them what we want and what they need to do for our future generations. Under our right! 
can't drink oil. Leave it in the soil. Can't drink oil. Leave it in the soil. Knowing that people are back home and they can't be here today, our elders and our youth, our tiny babies, like they can't be here to run. So I ran for them, and I ran for our clean water. I run for my community. This is our life. This is our health. This is our future at stake. Where these pipelines are placed is not by accident. The United States government has pushed for the genocide and the erasure of our people for over 200 years since, since the first contact. And we're doing this work to become good ancestors one day. Before we had horses, before we had postal services, any type of messages that we did, we ran, we had runners to deliver those messages. So running, um, we're bringing back our historic way of life. My message to Biden is, can you see us now? Can you hear us now? We are still here. We sent this message five years ago in the Obama administration where you was vice president. And now you can stop the Dakota Access Pipeline and you can stop Enbridge Line 3. You can stop fossil fuels altogether within the U.S. territory. The reason why we're so against pipelines is because of the destruction of our land. The land is who we are. We came here to bring back the black snake because if the Biden-Harris administration doesn't want this um, at their home, then they shouldn't bring it to ours. Stop Line 3! Shut down Apple! Shut down Apple! Shut down Apple! Thanks, everybody. Um, so, as I was saying before, that that th those are some powerful uh, videos of some young people and and the traditional uh, uh, native and and traditional uh, leaders that have been doing some work. Um, Tim, can I can I interject real quick here? Sure. Who is that? This is Joe Demar. Hi, Joe Demar. Um, yeah. Hi. Yep. And I'm I'm host of what a, of a show on W that airs on WGRN and. Uh, actually, I interviewed today, I interviewed two of the people that were involved in those actions. Fantastic. And those, inter those interviews are going to air on my show for a green future um, tomorrow in the Toledo market. And then it'll go out as a podcast and YouTube video. And next Saturday at five, it'll air on WGRN. And it's a pretty powerful uh, interviews. I interviewed them because this is also the fifth anniversary of the Standing Rock occupation. Uh, it started in April 2016, five years ago. So yep. um, that's why they were guests on my show. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. That's a great service. Thank you very much. Then that's why, Tim, we are introducing WGRN as its fifth year rolling into America, into Columbus, Ohio. And Tim, take it over. Yeah. Thanks, Joe, thanks everybody for showing up. This is great. What a wonderful uh, introduction you had there, Mark, uh, celebration of this month. Earth Day shouldn't be celebrated just for a month or a day. It should be celebrated for the whole year because it is the Earth that we're trying to protect. I want to just say a few words before I have others uh, come on, but um, I'd like to first off thank uh, some past producers because the radio station is all made up of volunteers and producers, and they are the heart and soul of the radio station. And uh, we have... Um, uh, is there a way to share the screen? Can I share it? Hello? Yes, Say you that. can. I can share the screen. Okay. And let me get to, let me figure out how to do that. Yeah. Go down, share screen. Yeah, I got that. Okay. <laughs> if you got sound, if you want to do sound simultaneous, you got to hit those two buttons at the bottom. You got to select what that? screen. No, nope. you have you to have select to which share. screen and then say share. It gives okay. you an option if you have several screens open. So I guess I should have asked that first. Uh, here yeah, we go. Is... How's that? There Can you, you see go. that? You got it. Yep. Yeah, this is our radio. This is our schedule. This is what myself as a radio worker, which I consider myself, uh, that we view every day. Uh, Jamie Pardo is also real active at, and so active in this. And so are all the producers, too, which some of them load up and uh, their shows into airtime. 
But what I'd like to say first off is that we've had some past producers that I want to recognize, and I don't think they've ever been given recognition. We have Rick Barr of the Music Room. Uh, he's not producing anymore, but uh, had a show for a couple years on WGRN. And the Beat or Oracle, uh, I think it's Michael Beam and Joseph De, uh, DeMatteo and uh, Kenny Ackler. Probably got all those names wrong. And other DJs participate in the Beat Oracle, which is... Uh, Right now, they quit producing about a year ago, and I use their archive in order to continue with the show because it is um, evergreen and just great, great, great music. And uh, we, um, the Pink Pill with uh, Joan Jones, uh, Green Power and Wellness Hour, uh, Harvey Wasserman, who's now uh, syndicate, uh, now national, uh, has a national show. Um, and our local show too, and Youth Beat Radio, which is a project of OSU, uh, uh, Folk Soup, and a Morning Song by the illustrious Victoria Parks, who actually is the one five years ago that hit the deadline in order to put the put the program together to in order to air the radio station. So she's a a, a, a you know a very strong hand in um, managing the station and uh, and in starting it we have uh, boundless living these are all local producers okay we have boundless living with uh, angela lutz your music and conscious voices with evan davis uh julie whitney scott presents and satin flow with uh, the wonderful julie whitney scott the cell with felice thomas and family and friends bob's basement jazz beyond theory with lenny lily cunning and lily right now is uh um quit producing because of COVID. For some reason or another, she just, uh, her priorities uh, became stronger than the radio show, but she'll be coming back. We have, uh, when the biomass hits the wind turbine, Jay and Annie Warmke, uh, Grassroot Ohio, Carolyn Harding, uh, Kensington Premium Ben with uh, Blend with uh, Larry Kensington, Peaks and Valleys with Lindsay, Lindsay Chula, Black Cannon, I think with Herbert Daniki. And for a green future, there you heard from Joe, Joe Damar, and uh, community. I think Joe is out of Toledo or Akron, but I, I can't remember. And uh, community routes um, uh, with Samuel Richards, uh, they're on a break right now because of COVID. The morning after with NARAL, the local chapter of NARAL, and um, let's see. Um, Tim, in interest in interest of time, I don't, I'm sorry, but can we? You you wanted to introduce some. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll finish it up. Okay, and then you. Uh, we got calling all seekers with Gail Lannard, and uh, the other side knows the the, the news of Bob Petrakis. and then on top of that, for six hours every single night, we have Radio Six One Four, and from being a snowplower working nights is listening to all the NPR repeats, everything on the local radio stations is. Radio 614 is absolutely one of the best local DJ and music shows, that I think, nationally. So uh, and then, of course, we have all our other uh, all our other national shows, which I guess in interest of time, I can't mention. I, I can uh, can't men I, I w will not mention, but just check our schedule out on WGRN.org. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing I, programming that's going on, and we encourage everybody to to view it. And then Tim's going to introduce just a few, two or three of the uh, producers. Yeah, and it is unique too. It is unique to the Columbus market and the national market when you really look at it. So, um, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Annie Warmke. Let's start with her. She has a show with Jay and Jay Warmke. The, when the biomass hits the wind turbine, can you go ahead, Annie? Un unshare your screen, please, Tim. Okay. Thank you. You got it. You're muted, Annie. <laughs> the, the, Sorry. The, it's notorious, an the notorious Zoom. Uh, I know condition. it. Yes, it's an honor to speak on behalf of WGRN on their birthday. And um, I, I wanted to, to talk a little bit about what it's meant to me to be able to participate with WGRN. It's really given us a voice. We live a very isolated life by choice um, in the middle of uh, uh, Appalachian, Ohio and uh, surrounded by Trumpites. And, um, and so it's given us a connection to 
uh, to the real world, our real world. And it's changed and enriched our lives in many, many ways. So community radio is such a great source of honest news and great music. And we first experienced that when we lived in Tampa, Florida, where they have WMNF radio. And that experience is what really moved us when we saw that WGRN was, um, that existed, we wanted to participate. So we started trying some things because we weren't sure, we weren't radio show producers or podcast producers at that point. So we took some columns I had written when we lived overseas and, um, and uh, we made a little show called Arriving at Blue Rock Station. And these were stories from the newspaper. And so we, about living in France and Germany and going to North Africa and places like that. And that gave us some confidence. So we got used to how to record and how to produce a show. And then we worked uh, with WOUB Athens to produce the radio show that we um, have on WGRN. And that gave us a professional uh, presentation, and then we remixed the audio, and then that's how it airs on WGRN. So it's not very complicated. And thank goodness for Tim Chavez, who's been a great help, a guide to us, and he downloads our show because I think he's afraid we might forget someday. So community radio is important because it offers an opportunity for volunteers to coordinate or produce their own local programs. We have a lot of dreams for WGRN's future, and we hope you'll get involved as a volunteer or in producing a program. And thank you, Tim, for keeping WGRN going. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Annie. Uh, Tim, do you have another producer you wanted to introduce? Uh, Joe is on and he introduced himself already, but thanks, Annie. That, that's great. I, I've listened to your shows uh, and have m learned much from them. Thank you. Tim, you're uh, muted. Tim, you're muted. Tim, Tim, Tim. Damn. Okay, I'm in. Evan, what do you have to say about WGRN? You got two wonderful shows, uh, one news feature and one music feature. Evan Davis. There you go. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> I've been uh, producing a public affairs show, Conscious Voices, for uh, since uh, not too long after the uh, WC. TRS got started, which preceded WTRN, and it airs on both stations. Um, I try to get out and do local interviews with folks. Uh, it's difficult. Not everyone has the time. It, it seems like uh, not everyone really gives radio the the, uh, um, the weight that it deserves as a public resource. But when I do do interviews, I give people long format within a long show. So uh, if uh, if we go half an hour and I fill the rest with other relevant material, or we sometimes go the whole hour and I really get deep into the subjects, which is something that no other radio station in Columbus gets to do uh, by virtue of the format. They, they have to interrupt their broadcasts for uh, uh, and uh, uh, announcements and things that really don't pertain to us. So uh, we, we have that luxury and we try to I use it to the full advantage. And I also produce a music show, and I try to be as eclectic as possible. Uh, the last four episodes have all been Afrobeat music that is not Kayla Kuti, uh, Afrobeat produced by bands from all over the world, including Japan. Uh, so that's been an interesting venture. Uh, did that go through? Did people hear me? Or going on and off? Yeah. You're, oh, okay. you're, you're going, but it's on and off. So um, yeah, we cut, we cut all the content. Evan uh, recently yeah, had the, all uh, the features. Evan uh, had a feature on Sprouts that was about uh, Columbus policing that was excellent. And oh, um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, guy, if any of you get a chance, you should be able. You should uh, tune in and listen to them. It's, they're really good shows. You know, I don't see any more producers up here. Uh, if anybody that's any, if 
is there any other producers that are um, in this Zoom? We'd like to hear from you. Uh, yeah, well, i Joe Demar again. <laughs> hey, Joe. Oh, great, Joe. Sorry about you. We're not ignored. <laughs> No, that's fine. Um, just, I wasn't expecting to speak at all, but uh, since you asked, yeah, my <laughs> show is uh, is out of Toledo. It's called For a Green Future. And it's a little different because um, my show actually airs live on a commercial station here in, in Toledo, 106.5 FM, the ticket. Uh, but then what I do is I, <laughs> I expunge all the commercial content in order to run it on the, the nonprofit WGRN, which uh, gives me a great amount of pleasure. Because uh, one thing that we do is now that once I take that out, I have to fill that space in so with some special content just for Columbus. And so uh, one of the guests on our show for the Columbus is, uh, I have him right here. Uh, I'll, he'll let him introduce himself. Rush Beanbog here with the obnoxious minority report. Okay, Rush, that's enough, yeah. So Rush <laughs> every week gives uh, little tips on how to be obnoxious and uh, it's, it's really fun to do and I'm just really appreciative of WGRN to let me rebroadcast my show on their channel. That's it, thank you. Yeah, there's one more person I'd like to recognize that uh, is not on WGRN but is on WCRS and that's DJ, um, BC, that's Brian Curtis. Brian, do you got anything to say for us? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, yes, Monday. The show <laughs> is turning 10, and I'm still working on the show right now, but, um, yes, I'm still working on the show. It's going to be big. It's so big, it's spread. It's amazing. Every month, you should take Here is a sample of what's gonna you're gonna hear. But that's just a glimpse. So, um, Monday on the show, you'll hear like a retrospective of me mocking Ohio State over the last decade, and of course. But talking about the Columbus community over the past decade, we're, we're, we're like skits and a bunch of stuff about Columbus and how great Columbus is. And of course, the following Monday, which is the second hour, we're doing this mockumentary called Making the Show. The process of how the show is being done um, and over the last year since Bob and Suzanne shut their down their studios because of social distancing, because ugh, they don't have these things in the carriage house. Yeah, these are wipes. They come in handy, Suzanne. But yeah, it'll be great to hear over the next two Mondays. So tune in. The DJBC Happy Hour airs Monday nights at 8 p.m. on WCRS FM, right before one of Evan's shows, Your Music, which Sometimes it's conscious voices, but yeah, I'm not going to even go there, <laughs> but okay. great then, brand. yes, so we have a lot of great shows that are also on WG or at both stations, such as both of Evan's shows, um, Democracy Now!, which airs at five during the prime drive time, Youth Beat airs right before my show on Monday nights, um, oh, tomorrow at two, Carolyn Harding show, which aired which aired yesterday, airs is repeated on Sunday afternoons at two on WCRS at them. And on Sunday afternoons, I air old older DJBC happy hours as well. So yes. That's great, Brian. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks for your work. Him. Yeah. Hey, you know, one more thing uh, is that um, uh, I've sent you an application for WGR and you never returned it. So why don't you think about that? Uh, you know, I want to finish off is that um, I don't see any more producers on our line, but uh, there's a huge opportunity with the radio stations, WCRS and WGRN. You, uh, we need, uh, we need um, 
people that can it'll it'll assist people in how to make presentations it can be a career move it can be a hobby move uh, as far as the volunteers, we need help in IT with our website. We need I, we need uh, help in social media and as far as getting the word out about the radio station. Uh, we need help in uh, just producing and also new shows and uh, PSAs and fundraising. And uh, please, uh, anybody that uh, wants to do anything on the radio on the radio with the radio station, contact us and uh, let's see what we can do because what we really also really need more than ever is listeners because our program is outstanding. It's unique in the Columbus market. And we do together with the WCRS and WGRN, we cover about 500,000 people. You know, we're all within the loop. Um, our signals can be reached. So it's, um, it's an easy station to manage. We don't have any payroll. So that doesn't put us under the crunch of other radio stations where they are, you know, constantly looking for money. Uh, our money trickles in and we can sustain ourselves. Uh, so uh, we got to look at the future because uh, the studio might not be at the shelter house anymore. There's a real possibility that might just disappear. And uh, possibly we need to partner up with some other community organization, you know, like third hand bike co-op or somebody, but a place where we can, uh, set up a studio to be able to have shows after the pandemic is over. And that's about all I got to say. You listen to WGRN. Happy birthday, WGRN. And uh, congratulations, uh, Brian. We're 10 years of a show. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, 10 years. Oh, yeah. That and, is great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not many shows <laughs> can say that. I mean, I'm halfway to yesterday's Top Secrets' record of like 700 plus shows. But then again, Tim did a show like up to four times a week. Wow. Thank you, guys. Thank Not you. Not you, the other. Thank you. Yeah, the Columbus uh, Institute for Contemporary Journalism, which is the free press, has had a long-term goal of creating uh, public people's media and radio being very important in that. So WCRS and WGRN, uh, developments have been very great, great for uh, local folks and continue to support them, please. Uh, Kathy, are you ready to go on uh, now? Thanks, Tim. Thank you again. Sure. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Um, is that visible to everyone? Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, so, all right. Yeah. So I'm actually here to talk today about Simply Living um, because I just became the new executive director. So that's what I'm talking about. But if people have questions about the Columbus Climate Action Plan or something like that afterwards, um, I'm happy to talk about that. Kathy, you got your fingers in everything. So, uh, you can talk about everything. I know that. <laughs> yes, I seem to get around for whatever reason. Um, so I guess this is kind of a time of rebirth or new birth for Simply Living. It's been around since 1992. Um, I think Chuck's on here and he's been an integral part of it and also Lynn, if she's here. Um, and uh, basically the mission of Simply Living is connecting people, educating people about sustainability and making connections. And, and I'm learning about the um, history of Simply Living and starting what are now a lot of just really core organizations in Columbus, such as Local Matters, such as Community Shares. Um, Keep Wayne Wild is housed under the fiscal umbrella of Simply Living. Um, long time ago, I started Citizens Climate Lobby in Columbus, and that was started at the Simply Living offices. It just seems like Simply Living has had a hand in helping and starting and, sh and um, sheltering a lot of organizations in Columbus. So we're kind of in a process of, I guess, rebirth or, or restarting. Um, and we have two new board members coming on. Um, Kai Landis is from an organization called Green Roots. And then Bob Sloan, who designs incredible newsletters and websites, is going to be on the board. Um, we have a brand new newsletter out, speaking of that. And this is, this is just a screenshot of the top of the front page. But that can be found, hard copies can be found, and I think the libraries, if those are open, and several businesses around Columbus. Um, and also there's 
on our website. We're going to repost the articles on the website as well. So we have a lot of new initiatives as well. And um, one of them is called the People, we're calling it the People's Solar Project. And so we're working with kind of an engineer visionary named Art Yoho, who lives up off of Cook Road. And there's, unlike most areas of Columbus, there's several acres back there um, between a school and some churches and a bunch of houses up there. And so his idea is to have a community solar project and to do the solar on these trees that he's calling soul poles. So he's kind of designed this concept and um, we've applied for some grant funding to build the first um, prototype of these soul poles. The tree, the trunk itself would be made out of, I guess, recycled repurposed steel. The solar panels themselves could also be recycled and repurposed, 10 per tree. Um, and then there would be the idea is to build a five megawatt microgrid in that area to power like 80 homes, several churches, a few schools and, and buildings around there. And that could be a demonstration project for a microgrid and community solar project in Columbus that could then be replicated, especially in our opportunity neighborhoods. And so um, the climate action plan has in it to build out several microgrids. And so we're saying, why not start here? Um, we've got people who actually want, you know, to physically do this. Um, so you may know that community solar is difficult in like private utility territory, like AEP territory, but um, because Ohio has not passed enabling legislation, but in a municipal territory, um, municipal utility territory, they don't have the same limitations like for a city owned utility. And 80 cities in Ohio have city owned utilities. Most of them are really tiny villages or towns, but Columbus has one of the largest city owned utilities in the country. So we are talking to them and we had an event this morning and council member Emmanuel Rennie was there. And so Fingers crossed that we're going to get to work with the city on this. That's not a done deal yet, but we are working on that. So that's one initiative. Another initiative you just heard from Annie. Um, we're working with Blue Rock Station. They offer solar, solar training, um, solar PV training, and some of their classes are online. So they have an intro to PV online and then a more complete residential solar online that helps lead to um, Neither of those will result by themselves in certification, but they can help get people who want to be certified in how to install solar panels, how solar works. Um, so we are working with them. And if somebody is a Simply Living member, and you can go to this nice long link here, but if you just go to the Simply Living website, we've got it, this, this graphic right here, we've got right up at the top of it. You can click that and get to it. And you can get $50 off um, this, this training. And it's and actually one of these courses, it would cut the cost in half. Um, so it's a really good deal. And you get to join Simply Living at the same time. So that's another initiative. And we're also hoping that this will be a model for working with other, ven like other vendors or other companies that offer classes or have classes that we could work with them to help market their classes. And then um, you know, work with them on a revenue sharing arrangement for that and, and a membership opportunity. So speaking of the Simply Living Marketplace, this one's an ongoing initiative. We have, um, it's at give.simplyliving.org and you can see the solar training discounts right here, but there's a number of like goods and services there. They're new or gently used items that people donate and then we put up on this site or there may be classes such as these nature walks with Cindy Lanese are really popular or services like a Traeger session um, and so these are like, you know, it's sort of like an online, I won't say a yard sale because, you know, we make sure that these products are in really good condition. It's not going to, you're not going to find something really beat up here, but um, you might go there and, and check it out at give.simply.org and you might find something interesting you like. So for future initiatives, um, we're also working with Morgan Harper's group, Columbus Stand Up, on a series of community dialogues. Um, and we want to hold, so we've applied for a grant for this as well. Like, fingers crossed, we'll hear this week, we hope. Um, and we would, if we get it, we're going to hold um, a series of community dialogues in like four different 
neighborhoods of Columbus, um, like different racial and economic backgrounds. And it's going to be specifically to provide feedback from these neighborhoods on the Climate Action Plan. Um, because the Climate Action Plan did solicit some feedback, public feedback and commentary, but not nearly enough people heard about it or were able to go give that feedback. And we wanna know what people in these neighborhoods um, you know, what do they want their neighborhood to look like? What are they, what services, what are they missing? What do they want to see? What do they want to see preserved? Um, and just hear from people in Columbus themselves about where they want Columbus to go on a sustainability level in the next 10 years. So another future initiative, we have not even really started this yet, but um, is a sustainable business directory. And so businesses that um, either have some relationships to sustainability run, run sustainably themselves. Like we, we want to build out kind of a one-stop shop where, you know, if people say, I want to buy local, you know, where can I buy X, Y, Z that's local? And they could go here and search or go here and, and find local businesses. Um, because part of Simply Living's mission is about the local economy and keeping our money here in Columbus, um, because that creates jobs, that reduces carbon emissions, and that invests in our local community. So um, we ha I haven't really tackled this yet, but it's on the agenda. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to get more involved in this. this stuff. So you can hear about all of this and more stuff and meet our new board members at our annual meeting, which is a week from tomorrow. 5 to 7 p.m. The idea is it's a virtual dinner because usually our annual meeting is a meal. And since we can't gather in person for a meal, we can do it virtually. Um, and so we'll be honoring Klaus Eckert from Green Columbus with the Carol Fisher Award and the Sunrise Movement Columbus Hub with our new Momentum Award for organizations. And Vicki, who's the hub leader, will be there and some hub members. So you'll get to meet them as well. And um, so go to, there's the address down there to register, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Simply Living 2021. Um, and it's totally free to register and um, hope you can make it. And that's Thank all you, I've got. Thank sure. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, any questions uh, of all that she just dropped? You said you had some uh, pictures from this app, this morning's actions possibly that you might be able to show a little bit to us. Senate Bill 22 is, is a bill that's going through uh, the Ohio General Assembly that will uh, put um, protests uh, into where they are in non-democratic countries uh, where it will be um, illegal to protest in a lot of ways. Um, ex escalating the cost of a person that actually gets involved with a protest and, and some other things. So uh, did you wanna share a little bit on that too, Kathy, please? Again, uh, Vicki, you mentioned Vicki with the Sunrise Movement and, and then the uh, cat with uh, Climate Strike. We have some very dynamic young activists that are getting very much involved in, in the ECHO work. And um, Columbus is gonna shine very soon. And I know we're not very happy with the Columbus uh, Climate Action Plan, but it is a plan at least. Mm -hmm. um, so here we are. Uh, yeah, Kathy, if you got those up, please let us see those, please. Oh, sure. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll just share my screen again. These are not my picks. These are my husband's picks. Um, yeah, and if you don't know her husband, her husband <laughs> is dynamic. He's, I mean, I don't know how he keeps up with everything. He's I don't know how he does either. He goes, he goes to way more protests than I have time to go to, but I'll just page through some of these. These are from, he literally put these up probably 10 minutes ago. So you'll be the first to see some of these, but these are from the protest, protest while you still can protest in Columbus. And these were, that's um, the Reverend Joan. These, this protest was statewide in several cities, plus there was an online component. And this was one, and that's Reverend Linda Smith. This was one I was actually able to go to. Um, and that's Amanda Hayes. I don't know everybody, but I knew, know a few people. But there's a series of laws at the Ohio State House that would make basically what people were doing today a felony. <laughs> and that's Reverend Susan Smith. Um, she's amazing. So, SB 33 is one and people would pay felonies and it would also, um, like uh, one of them is you can't distract a police officer. 
So like throwing glitter or blowing bubbles at a police officer would become criminal. That's Michael Greenman of Move to Amend who spoke. That's me. <laughs> There's, um, so we had signs about, you know, this would be a riot. This is going to be a felony. Let me see if we can get this is actually my first time. Um, this gentleman with the Black Lives Matter sign is always out at the State House. And he's got 45 of these picks, so I'm going to kind of move through them quickly. Let's see if we can get through. Yeah, that's Amanda. Yeah, so we blocked the sidewalk here. That would be a felony to block the whole sidewalk. We could all be thrown in jail for quite a bit of time for that. And these are all Paul's Facebook, Facebook page and probably will be shared into several groups if you want to go look at them again. And there were live streamers there the whole time. So this guy was pretending to be a police officer. And so one of the actions was, was to blow bubbles at him. Um, that would be a felony. And I think chalking the sidewalk would be a felony. Stepping off the curb would be a felony. And then this is, we also all blocked the street for like two minutes. That would be a felony. There's the Reverend Joan again. I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah, so we, we're trying to raise up mm -hmm. several different aspects and several different avenues for us Central Ohio residents to be able to speak clearly about what is earth justice, what is ecological balance, what is environmental justice. Uh, Columbus has had a long history of, of organizing around racial, uh, environmental racism. Uh, even the Ohio Environmental Council hired an environmental justice person a few decades ago you know, because of some stuff that was going on on the south side of town. Uh, so thank you, Kathy, for your ongoing work. And yes, as people are saying in the chat, congratulations on your new uh, position. And, and thank you. we expect and have always expected many good things from Simply Living. I saw Chuck was on as well. Um, long time in, a member of Simply Living as well. And Simply Living actually is a local con uh, constituent of 350.org, I believe. Um, that they're listed as such. Um, so yeah, 350.org is, is another organization that we're in the Midwest region uh, that has done a week of activity this past week. And a lot of the young activists were involved with things this week. And so that's why it's, they're, they're not on here. Morgan Harper, uh, we have her on tab to be part of the Stand Up Columbus for the Salon sometime in the near future. So yes, thank you very much. And as you see, many things are well connected. As they've always said, all things are related. So we have to understand and continue with that understanding. Um, thank you again, uh, Kathy, for your lead. Um, Brian, it is almost eight. So if anyone had any last words, we're going to end with some music uh, with Brian uh, Griffin or Gla Clash. Um, he, I saw he was on. Uh, so we'll have some music. And then um, uh, Steve and I, Stephen and I usually hang around afterwards a little bit, just talk to each other if you want to. You can jump off after Brian's music or, or stay on and talk a little bit more with us. Happy Earth Day, everybody. Happy Earth Month. Happy Earth Earth. <laughs> hey, Mark, can we yes. make Compass make an announcement? Please. Yes. I, oh, Daryl. Yeah, there are several announcements in the chat. And if you, we're going to save that and probably send that out. But yeah, Lynn, go ahead. Como? Okay. Uh, okay, Daryl. Yeah, uh, please. Yeah. Uh, Confest to get, we're not having a physical confest in June. We're going to have a, a, a virtual festival and we would like to get a, you know, a whole bunch of workshops. Uh, they will have like several different platforms. We'll have uh, pages on our website to just post links to workshops. Uh, we'll have a few live streaming. We'll have a venue. 
uh, the big room bar. Uh, we'll do some pops, some live stuff, live streaming from there. We might put some live workshops. So you can get in touch with me at daryl.mendelson.com, which I put on the chat. Uh, and uh, we're going to have a meetup on Monday, uh, the 26th, April 26th at 6.30. The people have questions uh, and to uh, have a discussion about it. Thanks, Daryl. Yes. And ComFest, another <laughs> community partner that has, has, has sustainability, has the model of what it takes to be community-based, non-corporate sponsored, has the early days of solar and non-fossil uh, uh, fuel based uh, kind of understanding. And it's too bad we've had two years without them, but they're coming back, I'm sure, next year if the health of this world is well, better. Well, the, you know, the virtual compass is very important too. There's things we can do in a virtual compass that we can't do in live compass. Yeah. And we have workshops at live compass. We only get a handful of people because of all the other stuff that's going yeah. on. And then it's gone. The stuff that we're going to put up, you know, any workshops can stay on the uh, website for uh, as long as we want. So I think there's an opportunity there to, uh, you know, put messages out and get the word out, uh, the, the words out. I agree. I agree that there, the technology there, it, it, it's, it's very powerful. But I'm telling you, walking from one conversation to the next conversation to the next conversation, you can't replace that. And so it, I, I'm just saying the ComFest is a beautiful, beautiful festival. Um, Brian, are you ready to jump on some music? We got eight o'clock right now. And uh, hey. All right. I'm here, Mark. Thank you. If, if you right. want to do a few, thank you. I would love to. Oh, my God. First off, oh my, it's so great to see everyone. And um, just, I mean, it just feels so exciting with the spring coming and we're getting vaccinated and all that stuff. And hopefully we're all going to be out here seeing each other again face to face and being together and um, do a song called Sidelines. We're going to get off. Well, I'm tired of sitting on the sidelines, wasting away our lives. So many chances have come and gone, they cast right before our eyes. We've been quiet for too long. Gonna raise a boy. Gonna stand up now. We have got our choice. Here we go now. We're tired of sitting on the sidelines. Sick away now. We are gonna be back now. Help the ass be found. Now we're gonna rise. Make our voices clear. Now we're gonna rise. There's so much to hear We're so tired of nothing getting done We're so tired there's no help from anyone We're so tired of being in our home We're so tired now we are not alone Not alone Ah, uh, yeah, gonna get off the sidelines, gonna get off the front now, hey, 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 yeah. We're tired of sitting on the sidelines, still in the starting gate, gonna get our pin and make our noise, that's what we're gonna say. We're gonna still protest, while we got the chance, gonna vote down the bills. We're gonna make our stand now. We're so tired. What can we try to do? We're so tired of people trying to push us through. We're so tired. We can hardly see. We're so tired of no one giving a chance for peace. We need peace and environmental.
metal catching justice. We're tired of sitting on the sideline. We're tired of sitting on the sideline. Oh, yeah. We're tired of sitting on the sideline. Tired of sitting on the sideline. We're coming in right now. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I got tired of the sidelines. Amen. Yeah, we're, we're coming out. We're all coming out. And um, here's a one um, kind of an oldie. I wrote this um, when what was it Senate Bill 5 back? Oh my gosh, that's almost 10 years ago now. But uh, we're going to rise up and we're going to strike down this other craziness that they're going to do. And here we go. Everybody, everybody who just keeping the fires going and keeping the word out there through all this has been really hard for all of us. And it's just good to know that there's still a light out there in the darkness to shine on the bad deed that people are doing. But there's a lot of good in this world and um, we're going to get a little hope and we're going to get some peace and we're going to get some justice. And we started out right. Sing this song, sing it strong, sing this song, we want justice, we want justice, we want justice in our lives, we want justice, we want justice, we want justice. In our lives, somewhere in America, a mother cries tonight. Somewhere in America, gonna raise up the cry. We want 
want justice. We want justice. We want justice in our lives. We want justice. We want justice. We need justice in our lives. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you so much, everybody, for Thank the you. tonight Thank and you. all that we do. All y'all are so valuable and so important to what we're trying to do collectively. Don't ever under uh, don't ever underestimate your individual contribution to the collective, but understand that we're powerful when we work together, and uh, we want to always recognize that we are missing two of our key people today and the last two months, three months. And uh, Bob and Suzanne, we wish them uh, greatness. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely. Hey, thank Matt, you again. Uh, can I say one more thing? Yeah, can please. I say one more thing? Yeah, we're, I don't know if everybody, uh, what we talked about collective action is that uh, when I announced that, uh, I don't know, I'm sure everybody's aware that uh, Edith Espinal and Miriam Vargas are out of sanctuary. And that was uh, basically a, uh, uh, you know, just fighting the power to be going into sanctuary, living with it, and having the support behind them in order so they could uh, uh, keep their will strong. And things change, you know, uh, big guys make different decisions. We got a new president, and overnight they were out. So, you know, it really counts. That took three years, and it was every I, I, uh, participated in uh, a meeting every week with um, Miriam for three years, basically. And uh, just by keeping her uh, healthy and sane and her family healthy, going to school with the kids and all that, is we got her out. Now, it wasn't us that actually pulled her out. Somebody else made the decision, but it happened. And it was that three years that did it. And it was all collective with all the support of all of you, too. All of you people have helped us. So, uh, let's congratulate ourselves on that. Yes. Yes, that's uh, big yeah. victories. Those are very big yeah. victories uh, that we need to understand and really glorify ourselves. But we can't sit on our laurels. There's so much more work to be done, so much effort that has to come together. We need to be strong. Uh, we have the Columbus Climate Action Plan that's out there that needs better and improvement. 
that we need to push the city council to do more, do better. Uh, by 2022, uh, the, the mayor is claiming that he's gonna be uh, all in with 100% of recycling for the fleet and et cetera. We'll see where that is, but he's not gonna do that without push. We need to push democracy as, as um, Oh, as so many people have said that it doesn't, you know, the powerful don't give up unless you root them out. You got to, and, and this is very gardening yeah. and we're talking gardening Absolutely. before. We have to cultivate the land. We have to work it. We have to create the space, the environment, the, 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 the power of people, the people's power to, to create the new, whatever we want to create, that new world, that new, world is possible. The new world is possible. And WGRN, congratulations on the birthday. I also want to, also one organization we haven't really mentioned today is the uh, Central yeah. Earth uh, 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 Green uh, Education Fund was very critical in the funding in the very early days. And I, I've really appreciated their work over the years. Uh, continue to, to do what you do and continue. Uh, we're going to keep talking a little bit if y'all want to talk a little bit. It's going to be sort of hard to get a large conversation, but um, uh, Stephen and I'll stay around a little bit longer if you guys want to. How was tonight? Uh, tomorrow, uh, Next month, we're looking at trying to do something around immigrant and uh, workers' rights. Um, if anybody has uh, uh, positions, um, Stephen and I were talking um, before this that since we're Zoom, we can start thinking a little bigger and a little bit larger. That's why I wanted to bring in the Minnesota and the um, DC actions. So we don't have to just think Columbus only. We can think that uh, we can bring some people in. So if you have any folks that are, are uh, interested in doing immigrant and also uh, workers' rights work, uh, that'll be next month because it is May Day coming up. There is also a call to end the war Guess who said he was going to end the war by May 1? It's your president, President Biden. He says he's going to start pulling people out May 1. That's not going to happen unless we push it, unless we push Absolutely. it. Yep. So um, anything that for the good of the cause, I saw some people put some great comments in the chat. Please, if you can, record or, or, or uh, copy that, however, whatever you call it. Um, and... Uh, you can keep it and we'll, we'll post that out. Um, Suzanne or someone usually puts out what, what happened during the free press. I'm not sure how that's gonna happen this year or this month, but we'll, we'll get out that as well. Um, so we'll make, it, we'll make it all work. Anybody, anything else? Yeah. Yes, yes sir. Mark, thanks for so, bringing up the Central Ohio Green Education Fund, which actually holds the license for WGRN and has been promoting localism in media for over a decade or more because we were contributing to um, our sister station when um, they were being um, run by Simply Living. So um, it's, it's kind of ironic that the Green Education Fund ended up with the second community station license in Columbus. And uh, you can um, always contribute to the station through the Green Education Fund via community shares. And uh, thanks again for um, mentioning the um, guardian of the WGRN. Hey, Joe, get, we can't do without you. So come on, come on, keep doing, keep doing. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody oh, else, please? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I don't know who that is. I just hear a yeah. <laughs> All right, I forgot to mention that. Oh, Brian. Michael's on the call, Michael Duty's on the call, but um, two weeks from today, the 24th, is the very yeah. Last Cost of the Street Garden event, the very final Cost of the Street Garden Earth Day. For those who weren't aware, um, about a couple weeks ago, Columbus City Council voted six to one in favor of development on that site. The lone no vote was Councilwoman Liz Brown. But the final Earth Day event, the final event at the Cost of the Street Garden will be Saturday, April 24th. I don't know what the times are. Yeah, it's usually, I, I saw that and I can't quite remember, but it's usually midday 
And he usually, uh, Mike usually, uh, usually has enormous uh, great events that uh, are around Earth Day. So music, et cetera, it's a beautiful day. Hopefully it's not like today, although earlier today it was beautiful. So there you go. Earth, Earth does speak in all different seasons, in all different weather. <clears throat>